Hello there, my name's Pat Randall and um, today I'm giving a presentation to the Letter Exchange, um, which sadly is not taking place in London. So we're going to do a Zoom uh, video walk around of the press and hopefully take advantage of the fact that we're here and not in London and have a look at, at what's going on in the building today. Um, like I say, my name is Patrick and I work with my old man John, who started the press in, um, I, I, I think, the early 70s really. He started as a weekend hobby and, and it grew into a business, um, a full-time business. And, it, and he really tends to stick down that end of the building, whereas this is where I work from. Um, and in the middle we've got Neil who takes care of the uh, monotype machines. So we, we, we cast our own type here as well. And my imprint is called Nomad Letterpress, which I started about seven or eight years ago. So we have, we have two different imprints from the same building, but we do overlap occasionally. I, I print a journal called Matrix for my dad on the um, big Heidelberg cylinder press. What I really want to focus on talking about today is a book published towards the end of last year called 2020 Vision, um, which is a book co-published with the Society of Wood Engravers, and it features 20 current wood engravers um, talking about their inspiration in their work. So uh, uh, their engraving sits alongside the person that most inspired them throughout history, engravers -wise, engraving wise. And um, then there's a short narrative about um, how they were inspired by that person and a, and a biography. What I want to run through today is really the, um, the challenges behind uh, publishing and printing a book by letterpress, um, specifically printing from the old blocks, printing from lead type and how we go about putting all of those ingredients together in, 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 and constructing a book. So here's the book. Um, the title page, like so, is um, all printed using 14 point perpetua, which is of course um, Eric Gill's typeface. And um, I think it goes especially well with wood engravings which is why we chose it and I love the um, the small cups so this is 14 point small cups the whole book is 14 point um, this is a 14 point monotype die case like so it's had a good shot um, and we're, go we're going to see uh, um, how the process works with the, with the monotype machines in a minute um, so after um, a short introduction by Mr. Nigel Hamway and myself about the printing of the blocks. Um, we move into the the, the, the book block, and um, each section starts off with, with, with like I said before, the, the short narrative about why um, the current engraver was inspired by the previous one. So this is Ian Stevens, and um, perhaps my favourite part of the book is. Um, the, the, the different artists talking about their influences and, and why they were inspired by the particular person. And I love the fact that um, Ian talks about his upbringing um, in rural, I think Northamptonshire he was, but um, he had a similar kind of farm, um, well, far, he came from a farming family as Buick did, and, and that um, encouraged his love of the, of the countryside and the landscape. And you can see when you come to his engravings, um, uh, Buick on the left here and, and, and Ian on the right, um, the similarity or, or the, um, the, the, the influence is very clear there. Um, the other thing to say about this page is while, while we were able to borrow um, blocks from, from institutions or from, from estates, the Buick blocks um, I was not able to borrow. Um, and quite rightly so. The, the, Buick was engraving in the in the um, mid to late 1700s, and um, over time um, the wood has deteriorated to such an extent that um, really they need to be uh, printed on a hand press. And all, all of this book was printed on a on a fire proofing press, um, which has an automatic inking facility, um, whereas the hand press is is um, it's a far more delicate printing process and um, actually I just wanted to mention I was reading yesterday this is a, um, a book on Buick um, 
about his blocks, the performance of his wood blocks it's called by Graham Williams at the Florin Press and um, he, uh, Graham is perhaps uh, um, one of the best printers of, of wood engravings uh, around today and um, he um, outlines the particular care that is needed when approaching a Buick block and it made me realise, phew, I'm glad that I wasn't able to, to, to use um, to use a genuine block in the book because um, of the attention to detail needed, which we don't quite have those facilities um, here, or skills really. Um, it's a great book that one, for anyone um, interested in, in looking at Buick's blocks further. Um, the other thing I wanted to say, uh, so the fact that we couldn't borrow the blocks means that we had to print um, the two Buicks from magnesium plates. And magnesium plates are generated from, from PDF artwork. So as long as you get a really good scan of, of, of any kind of artwork, you can, you can get a really high quality magnesium plate made today. And um, you're not printing from the real engraving, you're printing from a reproduction of the real engraving. So in a way, um, the artwork becomes one stage removed from, from the artist's actual hand and um, makes the thing slightly less genuine. Um, and I think these instances crop up, um, well certainly in the, in the letter carving world, um, where the machine has an input at a certain stage. And um, it's something that we try and avoid at every at every level really, which is why we print the type from, from monotype from lead um, and why we try to use wood wherever possible but in some instances it's not possible and, um, and actually um, you can get a, a well I, I, I'm pretty convinced that I get a far better result from printing um, a Buick from the magnesium than, than we ever could have done um, whilst printing from the actual wood block so it's cheating but um, there are some cheats which are necessary and acceptable, hopefully. Um, the next block I wanted to pick up, this is an interesting one. This is um, Neil Bousfield, um, who's got a completely different approach to wood engraving. And uh, actually, he doesn't engrave from pieces of wood. This is a four colour illustration. and. Um, I did ask Ian, uh, sorry Neil, and he said um, it's like a it's like a hard plexiglass, which he mounts onto um, bits of chipboard. It's all quite rough, you know. I looked at it, and um, there's no um, careful make ready in, involved in in printing from those. Um, um, it's as an object, it's, it's quite a, a rough and ready piece of um, artwork. I hope you won't mind me saying that. Um, but it's, um, it's kind of indicative of a new approach to, to engraving. I wouldn't call it, um, in the tradition of a very fine wood engraver, he's, he's experimenting with new processes and new techniques. And um, actually, um, he, he told me that usually his four colour work is, is all a, um, a reduction block process. So um, blocks two, three and four have, have disappeared by the time he gets to block number one. So actually uh, in providing us with four blocks for us to print from for this illustration, it was an entirely new process for him. Okay, um, yeah, the next section, this is George Toot, the dandelions, and his inspiration is John Farley. So. Um, this block is so big that it, it had to be, uh, we call this tipping in. It's folded down into the book. On a, on a slightly thinner, this is a Japanese Sonomi paper, which tips in quite nicely. Um, I wanted to show this block. This, this block, by the way, belongs to, um, well, it's being looked after by the Manchester Metropolitan University, who very kindly loaned it to us for the purpose of the book. Um, what I love about this block is the kind of free way in which Farley engraved it. When, when, 
it had a quite a thick layer of ink on it this and um we, when we rubbed it all down it's amazing that his um you could see his felt marks still um and you can see how the original um marks that he made in terms of uh, drawing out the, the the illustration on the block compare with his actual cut marks and um what i love about it is it's quite free flowing and free spirited you can see he's in some cases completely deviated from the line that he originally drew i hope that's going to show up on there um especially up there you see these kind of zigzagging um felt marks which actually are quite loosely followed when he's cutting and uh, and that says to me that he really um he was really quite fast and um and and uh, direct in the way that he engraved into the block um it's from the 1950s 56 he engraved this so it took a a really careful bit of make ready to get it right you can see that it's called a composite block so it's nine actual bits of wood fastened together um, through the middle there and over time the, 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 the nine bits have um, expanded or contracted at different rates as, as wood inevitably does so um, yeah it took a fair bit of make really that one thank you the next spread this is Richard Wagner who lives in California um, in the States and um, his influence is Robert Motherwell um, I, I wanted to show this one because every engraver um, has their own way of printing their blocks and it's all slightly different everybody's got their favorite recipe for black ink or whether uh, the amount of pressure they would like to, to have built up on a certain area um, there's a certain way of doing things you know or paper especially as an example and um, and um, so Richard's is a two color block the, the first red um, was printed and it, and it had to dry over the space of a, of a week um, before before the black went on but um, so with Richard's block he sent um, this long kind of instruction um, guidance as the the blacks that he would use um, the impression that he wanted on the block and um, um, so with his black it, he actually adds an opaque white which um, is completely white, chalk white, into his recipe. Um, I, 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 unless you looked very closely at this and compared it to, to one of our black tins, you would have noticed, but it kind of creates um, a, a, like a charcoal effect in with the black um, and dulls it down slightly. He uses a thing called dullet, which is a powder which you can, can't get over here actually, but it's like a starch powder which thickens the ink as well. Um, I mean the whole way through the book we were basically um, getting an education from all of these engravers into their working methods and practices and, and how they would like to, to do things and how they worked. This is the recipe for his black, uh, for his red sorry. So it's the mixture of pyrrhal red and, and, and um, yellow litho it's called. But the funny thing about this, where I actually had to reprint this red one time because um, the colour of the solid red completely changed when you put the black over the top. It's got these fine lines in the design um, and uh, an optical effect of that was to, to lighten the, the, the red behind it. It was quite interesting and a real pain in the ass. Took another day to, to reprint that red. Wasted 400 sheets of paper, but there you have it. Um, before I go on any further, I want to go and um, I, I'm um, I'm talking in the first person about printing this book, but actually um, Anna Parker, who who's been working with me for three years now, um, is responsible for printing all the engravings in this book, and um, um, the next double page spread involved quite a um, a fairly heavy amount of, of make ready on this block. And um, so I want to go and see Anna and interrupt her and we'll go and talk about the make ready stage of, of how she went about preparing this block.
Okay, hi Anna. Hey! So, this is Anna. Anna, um, like I said, has been with us for, what, three, three, over three years now? Over three, yeah, yeah. And, and Anna is responsible for printing all of the blocks in 2020 Vision. Um, and today, Anna has a couple of magnesium plates. I don't know if you can see this, but a couple of magnesium plates uh, um, in the press that she's printing. Um, and this is a machine which the book was printed on, a proofing press. And um, the benefit of using this machine is it's got an automatic inking system. So you don't have to hand roll each engraving. That kind of part of the process um, is done automatically for you with the system here. And you can see, can I roll it forward a bit? Yeah, yeah so this is, um, this is Anna's Timpen packing. And she's done a bit of a rush job today, but we can see she's stuck her packing right onto the tympan there and, and and that um kind of brings up the the heavier um the, the areas of the block which you'd like to to make um heavier and blacker um they're amazingly sensitive aren't they these machines really, really sensitive. so yeah. even just like a rizzler paper a tissue paper will really um increase the the, the blackness right yeah block. yeah but what I wanted to do Anna, is talk about um, this spread in particular and the make ready that you did with that mm. one. Do you remember? Yes. Okay, so here we have Abigail Rora's um, engraving. Well, this is her make ready, our make ready. Um, and basically, as you can see, this is what we call Bible paper. And this is the really, really thin layers um, of paper that we build up um, and you can see just as I pick it up I've got gaps in here um, and that is to release the pressure so the, the places that we've got paper we've, we want to increase the pressure hence why around the outside as it's a very very deep black we want to have as much pressure as we can um, relative to the face which is very very finely engraved so what we've had to do is to really pick out the details um, and there's some really, you can see the sort of stippling effect has really, we've really had to pick that out to sort of um, bring it out in a way that doesn't um, over emphasise it. Yeah, you don't want to put too much pressure on the really light areas, do they? Because yeah. the problem that you get is the ink squeezes out of the sides and those really fine white lines become filled in. And, yeah. and that's what engravers hate. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what we wanted to avoid. Um, yeah, and so you can see we've got probably about four or five sheets of newsprint. So we use newsprint as well, which is a slightly thicker than the Bible paper. Um, and especially with the eyes, we've got really dark eyes because they were really, um, there's a lot of yeah. emotion in that face that we want to capture. And I like the way that you tear the edge of the paper so that the paper's torn. Yeah, yeah. So as not to give a hard... Yeah, exactly. So some, some places obviously you want to sort of cut right through. So for his collar, you can just cut right through there. But for when you want to feather the sort of edge, you want to um, you want to tear it. So we've also got that with this. You can see I've tried to... It's quite hard to tear it. So I've just kind of uh, stippled it with my knife wow. and taken it out that way just to give it a bit of a rougher edge than the, the sharper lines that you get. Yeah. Where, yeah. And Abigail um, engraves into resin grave, doesn't she? Yes, yes. I, th I think as time goes on, wood is um, is becoming much harder. There's there's a guy called Chris Daunt who who um, makes very good wood blocks, but um, it's not so easy to get the wood planed down to exactly the right height and prepared to the to the precision that you need to engrave with. So a lot of engravers now um, are turning to this stuff called resin grave. Yeah, yeah. And how did you find that to print with? It was, I think we we found it took a lot more ink than the than the wood blocks, um, which was it was a whole new experience. This was the first resin grave that I had engraved. I think it's the only one in the whole, not the only one in the whole book. There's we a had couple, Neil wasn't Bansford, there? Didn't we? Yeah. yeah. But um, one of the, yeah, w w with such sort of deep blacks, it was it was um, it was quite hard. Well, not hard, but yeah, it was it was just a bit of a. A new experience definitely. yeah it's a harder surface isn't it so um, for some reason you just need to apply that little bit extra ink yeah and, it, and in a way that makes it more tricky because with the extra ink you've got the greater risk of filling in some of the finer detail exactly which is what yeah. we're trying to avoid yeah yeah um, absolutely 
Lovely. Thanks, Anna. Okay, so this is the, the monotype room, which is uh, the domain of Neil Winter, who's been here about 10 years. Long. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and what we have is three composition casters and two super casters. Um, but the beauty of having our own um, monotype kind of setup um, is that we're always printing from fresh types. So once we're finished with a galley of type, um, like so, this is, this is for example a, a galley of type which comes off, off the machine. Once the book has been cast and printed from, all of the type goes back into the, the melting pot here um, and is reformed into ingots, like, like so. And then these ingots are fed back into the melting pot on, on each monotype machine. So the whole process is a continuous cycle. So Neil, who did um, one of the last monotype apprenticeships going, didn't you, I think? And um, yeah. um, three years on the keyboard, was it? And three years- Five years keyboard, five years caster, two years supercaster. Wow, so there you go. And, and this is probably one of the last keyboards, um, monotype keyboard systems going in the country, I think, isn't it? Probably. Us and Stan Lane. Um, but, but the basic principle is that you t uh, tap out your copy onto the keyboard and each character makes two holes in this spool paper. And the spool paper is the one interchangeable part between this system. This is like the message system between the keyboard and the, and the, and the casters. Before I go any further, um, I'd like to say that I don't know how to work this machine um, at all. So um, I've cobbled together a, a, a few things in my mind. But um, this here is the spool paper. So that's the link between what we were just looking at, the, um, the keyboard and your monotype machine. And, and, and what happens here is you see the holes that have been tapped out by the, the keyboard. Uh, um, air is blown through two of those holes at a time. and that tells this machine which position to um, to fit the die case on top of the mould. So you're travelling on an X and a, and a Y axis um, with the two holes. And there's a series of um, valves here which pop up and, and, and basically position this thing in the right place when it's all working properly. Um, and over at the back here you've got your um, your melting pot. I haven't got anything on there. So your ingot is gradually fed into the pot there, gradually, 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 and um, and that enables um, a, a, a continuous supply of molten lead to be. This is a the pump here to be pumped up through your mould here, and on top of your mould there is is your die case, which moves it to those positions. And the reason these machines are so complicated is because you've got uh, running cold water going through that mould um, which is there to cool the type down. So as, as soon as that pump has, that type has hit the die case, that, that lead has got to solidify, isn't that right? And at just the right speed um, before, the, before the next pump comes along. And you're casting at about three characters a second, I think. Um, is, is the rate that the machine goes. So um, you've also got the balance of the air and um, of, of the heat of the lead as well. So it's, it's, a, it's a lot of things to have your eye on at one time, which is why there's very few people left um, in the country who can work these machines. We're very lucky to have Neil. We need to look after him. Finish bit. <laughs> The edition size of uh, 2020 Vision is 350 copies um, and then we have some extras to go alongside it. 30 portfolio copies uh, which is the book alongside a, a set of prints from the book 
And then we have an A edition of the book, 25 copies, where um, where we get, we give the book all of the um, additional um, add-ons and, and, and make it to the best possible standard that we can. So what I want to show you lastly is the A copy. Um, and this is the copy that we make to the absolute um, best possible standard that we can and give all of the extra add-ons um, that, that it's possible to do with the book. Um, and it's really an excuse for the binder to show off his skills as well with the binder of the book. Um, it comes in a cylinder box like so and it's got three different elements this one. So here's your set of prints. Can you see that okay? Um, which come in a portfolio and there you've got the, the, the list of the prints in, involved in the book. And then, I'll leave that for now. So this is the, the full leather version of 2020 Vision. Um, it's been bound by Roger Gretsch up in Shipley in West Yorkshire. And um, this is an excuse. Ro Roger, he's an excellent binder, but he's also an excellent um, designer, in my opinion. And um, I trust his eye, really, to, to, to come up with something and, and, and go for what, whatever he wants in terms of the design of, 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 of the leather. This is... Um, actually uh, taken from an image of, a, of an engraver, um, half an engraver, and he's inlaid these uh, leather lines on top of the, the yellow leather that's there. And it's a very complicated piece of binding because he's actually got to, on the underside of the leather, um, he's got to cut the groove into which this blue fits. And he's also got to make a mask to, to um, enable them to cut around the blue like so. So um, It's interesting, he's done 26 of these and they're all slightly different to each other. Sometimes you get the, the spine of the animal um, coming through on the book and some have tougher skins than others so you do get that kind of different personality in between each book which is which is what I love really. I've decided to keep this one my favourite. Um, um, yeah, I think I think the um, the animal is a calf, so it's all calf skin. But, um, um, so that's it's now. So he's put a gold foil on the top there. The end papers that we've used for this one um, uh, were originally made for Henry Moore. So we got the um, Henry Moore watermark now. I don't know if you can see that with, with the light there. Um, Henry Moore is one of the artists featured in the book. So. Um, it's got all of the added extras that, that we can think of and then alongside the portfolio in the book um, we've got another book and this one is called The Collector's Cut so unfortunately the 20 engravers that we chose for the book didn't all choose the engravings that we wanted them to and we had a few um, really nice blocks left over Nigel did really um, and this really was an excuse to, to, to show off those blocks. Um, so let's see what have we got here. This is another John Farley book called, book called the um, Passion Flower. Um, the binding style that we've used for this one is called a French fold. So you can kind of see if I pull that out that one sheet of paper covers four pages and um, that, that there's a fold at the top there so it's a French fold binding um, and the beauty of this from the printer's point of view is that we're always printing on the same side of the sheet of paper so we don't have to worry about backing up and we can also print on a really thin paper and get a certain amount of pressure and ink onto the block you see if I lift up the kind of back flap and look inside the book there you can see that you couldn't really print on the back of that sheet of paper. So this um, style of, of, of printing, of binding, enables you to, to you know, cheat to a certain extent and, um, and just print on the one side of the sheet and make life easy for yourself. And now I've numbered the blocks very simply with a blue ink. That's Pete Lawrence. So, like so, you get 11 blocks in this, in this book and that's just an additional um, extra item to go in the slander box with the other two items. Hey. The box shuts like so. 
yeah, so I think I've, I've come to the end now. Um, thanks very much for joining, and, uh, um, and thank you also to Edward Waits, who, who asked me to participate in the talk. Um, this is obviously a, a Zoom, so I hope it edits down to, to 40 minutes, but um, I'm hanging around for a Q&A, so if anybody's got any questions relating to the talk or to anything uh, print or letterpress related, then um, please fire away. I'm going to hang around for the next hour or so. Okay, thank you. Bye for now. Bye.